Hello, it is Thursday, October 21st. Today we're going to talk about um, project three, the color board, pan finding the Pantone codes, finding your color story, creating your swatches, whether you're going to make rectangles or cutting them out. Uh, we're going to talk about pattern creation in Photoshop, not Illustrator patterns. So we'll be using raster images. We'll be cutting them out. We'll be making motifs, make a block pattern, a half drop, and a seamless. And uh, I'm going to walk you through at the same time the homework that's due next week, as well as the end of project three, the color board. I'm going to kind of do hopping around. Because they're both related, the color board and the homework, they're the same activity. So I'm going to go over both at the same time. Uh, next week, what will be due is your pattern homework, those four pages, and uh, your project three in a combo PDF, along with uh, another attachment, which will be your paper in Microsoft Word uh, format. Um, I'm going to keep talking about that over and over again because it doesn't matter how many times I say it. I bring a ruler to class when we're in person, and I start smacking the walls with this one because no, no matter how many times I say it, it still gets messed up. People will not upload um, the paper with their project. I mean, some people combo it. Don't combo your paper. I need the paper separate. It has to be a separate Word document outside the combo PDF. But it has to be in one attachment. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to share my screen here. And uh, maybe I have a picture ready. Sports bra? No. That's something I'm working on with my wife. She's writing a book about athletic athleisure wear. Excuse me for that. Um, so let's see. Dihan, uh, Project 3 upload. All right. So when you. I'm sharing my screen. When you upload your com project three next week, right? So you're going to go and you're going to click on the header, and I'll walk you through that process. But once you upload it, you're going to have you're going to have two attachments, right? Now, um, a lot of you will like upload your paper first, and then you'll upload your your combo second, and then you'll leave me a note saying my paper's on the first attempt. It doesn't work like that. I can only award points for what is listed directly below. So if you have, if you screwed up your submission and you do a second submission and you leave out one part, you're only going to get graded for the part you submit. So it, let's say you do three submissions and you keep screwing up, then do a fourth submission and put both of them in there. Put your combo PDF and your paper. Also, your paper has to have your name in it. If you if it just says trend report, you're going to get a zero on that part, 25 points off. You're going to maximum points you'll be allowed will be 75 points out of 100. You don't want that. So make sure your paper has your name on it. Make sure it is in a Microsoft Word format. It says DOC. It doesn't say pages from Apple. It doesn't say PDF. I do not want a PDF paper. You will get a zero if you do that as well. Remember, Microsoft Word document. Put your name on it. Two attachments in one submission. That's all I'm going to say about that. If you um, please don't mess that up. Uh, if you do, just re-upload it again. No big deal, right? I, I think I, I left five submissions open for for that one. Uh, I don't imagine people making more than five mistakes. All right, so here I am in the course content area of our class. I'm at the lab folder. I've had some students say, you know, where's the description for project three? It's never been discussed. Are you kidding me? I have been discussing this in lecture. So people who say this to me obviously are not watching the videos. Does that make me upset? A little bit, but it's OK. I get it. It's coronavirus season. Here it is right here. I'm not going to read all this over again. You're going to have to go back and watch the videos to figure out what exactly we need to do. I do go over these examples. In this example, uh, in this Project 3 trend report example, there are things that I do like, and there are things that I don't like. As I said, Number two, fairy, retro fairies. This is crap. If you hand in something that looks like this, you will get a C minus. Okay, you'll get 65 points or 70 points just taking five pictures and slapping it on an artboard. No, 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 no. Not, I'm not having it. You guys gotta show me you know how to cut out your tools. Show me you know how to blend stuff. Show me you know how to do layer effects here. Make it look nice. Make it. I want your 
I want your creation to evoke a mood and not just look like something that was made 15 minutes before lab. All right, um, you can do this quality work here 15 minutes before lab if you know how to use the tools. If not, it will take you a little bit longer. But uh, we are very, Photoshop is not a difficult program to use uh, compared to Illustrator, so um, you should be able to do this with no problem. I'm gonna walk you through it again today. Pattern creation, Pantones, patterns, you know, uh, this kind of stuff, et cetera. Uh, so help you get uh, the best grade you could possibly get. And uh, I think, yeah, I think without further ado, so as you see in this week's um, Spark presentation, it says uh, mood board and color board, you know, do week nine, uh, see Blackboard learn for specs inside the lab folder, inside the projects folder, right? It's all in there. Here's the WGSN uh, link, I mean, for the, uh, library database as I've been talking about every week. And you know, this is the portal that you're gonna go to all these great fashion resources that you can use for your paper if you want. I do principally want you to find your macro trend from WGSN, but you're welcome to use any of these other uh, uh, forecasting and fashion websites as well. Uh, so uh, the other question I get is for your paper, are we talking about one little detail here or are we talking about the whole macro trend? Uh, you should be talking about the whole macro trend, but if you want to focus, just speak briefly about the whole macro trend and then focus on one individual uh, trend, that is fine. Um, I have no problem with that. Um, yeah, okay, so without further, I'm gonna go talk to you about our homework slash project three. So project three, um, this is, I just did this uh, on Tuesday. Uh, this is a great little demo I did on Tuesday if you want to watch that one, how to do Project 3. I'll go over all this stuff again. Here, let me just delete all this. All right, so we're going to work on patterns. So by now, your, your mood board should be done. And um, let's work on patterns. So I'm going to create a new um, Photoshop document. I'm going to click on the Print tab here. When you click on the print tab, uh, you have some different presets. Usually it goes to 300 DPI uh, or PPI, which is what we want. I'm gonna put my color mode to CMYK right here. And I'm gonna go my width, I'm gonna do 14 by 11. And then you can choose a portrait or landscape. I'm gonna go uh, portrait for now. I'm gonna change the name here to uh, pattern uh, template. And I'm going to show you the four pages that we're going to have included. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you only need to have one Photoshop document, and you can create all four PDFs from one document. So here's my pattern template. First thing I want to do is we need to cut out at least six um, motifs. And uh, in addition to that, we need to have a seamless picture and our cutouts there because what we're gonna do, uh, and there is an example in, um, if you wanna see the example for this week's homework. It's right here. Uh, print repeats in Photoshop, Classwork 8. Uh, this little zip you can download has some practice files in it. Please don't use this practice files in your homework. This is just if you wanna follow along in class uh, while I'm making my patterns. But basically what we're gonna do is we're going to create, uh, is this the same thing? Yeah, it is. We're gonna create a board where we have the pictures where we got our motifs. And you can have them cut out or not cut out. I'm gonna cut mine out to just save a step here. So you're gonna have at least six pictures uh, plus a seamless picture. This student forgot to put their seamless picture in. But um, you're gonna cut out your motifs and then you're gonna show your uh, repeating motif you don't need to have, this is the swatch she has for from her project three. She included that just to go over the top. But I do want your motifs to be numbered. So you say like, I got number one motif from this picture. And then here's my block pattern. And <laughs> here's my half drop where the, I have my motif here. Here's one, two, three images. There's my motif. Actually, I want this is probably more accurate representation of the motif this time around. That way you can see it repeating 
one over and one down. I'm, I just realized I'm talking really fast. I was looking for some chocolate earlier. I found some Trader Joe's uh, dark chocolate bark, and I ate a bunch of it. And I don't drink coffee because um, 10 years ago when my wife got pregnant, she couldn't drink coffee anymore. And then when your wife stops, stops drinking coffee, you stop drinking coffee. And so uh, I stopped drinking coffee at that point. And I didn't notice this chocolate was filled with caffeine because she's back on caffeine. This was like, uh, I basically ate like three espresso chocolate bars. So excuse me, I'm talking a little fast. Okay, so anyway, you're gonna find uh, a picture, a seamless picture. We're gonna cut out a bunch of uh, pieces of it. And I'm gonna show you how to create one big swatch without glaring seam lines. And then we're gonna combo it. And this is our homework. This is gonna be due next week in addition to your project three. You can take some of these um, patterns and use them in your project three, just like we did in project uh, one. So if you wanted research images that coincide with your trend or, or your mood board, that is great. You're welcome to do that. All right, so if there's any, no more questions, I'm going to start making my pattern. I'm gonna start cutting out my motifs and labeling them here. You know, um, so I have some text here. We'll call this uh, motifs. And um, I always like to see some, um, what you call it, uh, layer effects on my text, just so I can um, read it. I'm double clicking to the right of the text here to open up my effects, my layer style panel. You can also access it down here through this little FX button um, right here. I'm going to say uh, drop shadow. And watch here. That's it, little drop shadow there. You can click and drag your shadow out if you want to place it someplace specific. Or you can use the little uh, the angle controls here to change the motif angles. I mean, you drop shadow, the size of your drop shadow, uh, your spread, et cetera, et cetera. Then you have like your little meme text effect here. All right, motifs, let's get, I'm going to also number these uh, one through six as soon as I find the text tool. Um, we'll go one. That looks like the number one, right? And I will just make like uh, six of these. So that's a two. I'm just double clicking here. Oh, check mark when you're done. Double click uh, three, check mark, double click four, hit enter, double click, uh, oh my God, check mark. That's not the number four, is it five? There's gotta be an easier way to do this. Um, if someone has a question, just yell it out because I can't see it. All right, so now I'm gonna grab my motifs here. So I need to have six pictures or five pictures in a seamless picture here. So I'm gonna go and um, I have a bunch of pictures that I did earlier. Flower, uh, there's a butterfly. Uh, there's a flower two. Uh, there's a flower three. There's a flower four. There's a flower five. And then uh, I had, think I had some rocks. All right, all right, that's already open. All right, so here's my pattern template here. Uh, I'm gonna put my pictures, so I'm gonna cut out like uh, this butterfly here. For example, let me, I'm just gonna, you don't have to do what I'm gonna show you right now. I'm just gonna show you this to illustrate what's happening. On my motif page, if I were to change my background color, and uh, you can just go into your effects here and go like a, I don't know, a gradient overlay or something. You could add like a little, um, there's all different kinds of gradients here. Let me just. All right. <laughs> um, let me not have a white on top. Let's go to, um, yeah, okay, here we go. You don't have to add the gradient overlay. I'm just going to show you. If I were to take this butterfly picture and drag it, um, or I mean, I'm sorry, copy it. Do a select all, I'm sorry, select all, and then copy, and then paste it over here. Control V or uh, Command V. You'll see I have this white background. That's why I changed the background color so you can see there is a background here. If uh, I do want to have these cut out, 
So all you need to do to cut it out is grab this um, right here. It's called the Object Selection Tool. It's the third tool down. If you're not in the right, if you don't see the same tools I have, you need to go over here to Window, Workspace, uh, and I'm on Essentials here. There, there is no Essentials Classic in Photoshop. Just click on Essentials and then go to Reset Essentials here. And it will put everything the way it is. And I have my layer panel popped out so I can take a look. All right, so fourth tool down in the Essentials uh, layout is your Object Selection Tool. There's a little animation. Ta-da! And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to drag on the inside of my background color. Let's see if I got it. Ba-boom! Look at that. It, it, it's right there. Now I'm just going to cut it out. Control or Command X, or you can go Edit Cut here. See, it's Control X. And there's a little hole. I don't need to see that anymore. I'm going to make that disappear on my layer panel. You can delete it or make it disappear. And then I'm going to hit Paste. Control or Command V, and there is one motif. Hurrah! Look at that! All right, let's go. I don't need this anymore. Let's do my next one. Flower. I haven't had a cup of coffee in like years. I am buzzing. All right, there, I cut out my flower. Now, look, here's a problem here. See this little white space? So here, I'm going to do a, a copy. And this is all you need to do is um, paste it in. But I have this little white space here. I, I, I don't like that. So I'll show you how to get rid of this, um, get rid of that white space. And it would be especially jarring if you're, if your background color were um, like darker, like something like this, right? You can see that white space. It looks horrible. So how do we get rid of that, Dave? All right, so take a look. I have this basic outline here, um, and I want to add, I want to cut out these spaces. So now I can just go over here to my, um, remember how we did the lasso tool? We did like. Uh, plus or minus with the shift and alt key. I'm going to go over here to my object selection tool. And we have here something called a magic wand tool. And it works the same way. So I'm going to keep this dotted line. I'm not going to click on anything yet. But when I hover over this white space, I'm going to hold my um, alt key down. This option key if you have a Mac. And you see a little minus sign appear by your magic wand. And then you're just going to click on that empty space. See? Expect old Patronum. And then it's gone. Look at that. Stupefy, boom. Uh, Wingardia Leviosa. All right, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. And then I've cut these out. Now if I do uh, copy or cut or whatever, and I go over here, boom, paste it in with my, uh, you see? Now they're cut out. And that's how you do that, right? So the benefits of having a video is you can rewind and play back what I said, because I'm not going to repeat it. It's on video. Uh, all right, so there's my second one. And let's do uh, another one. Flower, object selection tool. Ba-boom. And we'll cut that one out, and we'll go and we'll paste that one in. Look at that. Ooh, it's big. Control-T or Command-T. And uh, we'll shrink that down. There's a little bit of white in there. You can use your eraser tool if you want to. You know, so if you have OCD and you're like, oh, my God, there's some white right there. I got to get rid of that. How do we get rid of that? Let me show you. Just grab your eraser tool. Right? How do you change the brush size in your eraser tool? I'm clicking on the bracket keys to the right side of my letter P on my keyboard. Right bracket bigger, left bracket smaller. Over here is our, you can change the size over here, too, as well. Um, there's also an edge hardness. Uh, unless you're going to do airbrushing effects, we're going to keep our edge hardness at 100%. So there's my um, here's my brush, my eraser. It's too big. I'm going to go smaller, and then you can just you know erasing with pixels at this point here. Um, there are other ways to do this with more masking and stencils and clipping masks and stuff. But you know, if it's something real minor, you can just kind of run through the wet paint here. No one will notice. All right. It's going to be a, you know, it's going to be tiny. No one's going to see that. No one's going to know. No one's going to know. No one. All right, there we go. So we have our 
good motif here. And we have another one, pineapple. Look at that, it even cut out the reflection. This one's a little hairy. I'm not gonna go and make it perfect because we don't have time. Right, after I paste things in, I like pressing the letter V on my keyboard. That brings up my move tool right away so I could move this around. One, two, three, four, and um, five. Strawberry shortcake. My, she's looking swell. You little doll with the strawberry smell. Okay, there we go. Yes, I had a daughter, and I had to watch Strawberry Shortcake over and over again. So I can sing you any song, like the theme song to Sweet Life and Zach and Cody. Dear God, no. All right, so here's my um, one, two, three, four, five motifs. I need uh, my rock motif here. So... Um, I'm going to get rid of my rock layers. Oh, you know what? <laughs> OK, you know, I'm going to do this over again. Let me just delete this one. And we'll bring it back. We'll go open, recent, to rocks. And I'll do a select all. And I will um, do a copy. And then I'll do a paste. And then there's my six. I need to have my cutouts here as well. So um, to do the cutouts, let me show you. And this is so much easier than before. I used to have this multi-step process. It took a long time to teach this. Now, um, I want to create a, a patch. So look, look what's going to happen here. Now watch this. If I take this photograph and I say edit, and I go select all, and I go edit define pattern, right? Let's just say I take this photograph and make a pattern. And I'm going to call this um, not seamless, right? Now, if I go to um, my board here, and let's say I make everything disappear. and I take a rectangle and I fill it right here and I add a fill. Uh, this is the pattern button right here for your fills. You can click on that. Um, and if I click on say rocks, or this one's called not seamless, right? Um, this You can see these horrible seam lines, right? And we wanna make a pattern where you can't see these lines. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, create what's called a seamless pattern, and I'm going to show you how. Let me show you how to do it. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm taking my, my, um, my rocks, and I'm going to – the reason why you have those hard seam lines showing up is because a lot of these rocks are cut down the middle. You see how there's a hard edge here, there's a hard edge here. And then when you tile these rocks together, these little straight edges that are cutting through your rocks, your brain knows what a rock looks like. So when you have it up against another photograph and these lines don't line up, you get a seam line. So we are gonna get rid of those seam lines and we're gonna cover it with rocks from our photograph. So I can see there's like kind of Generally, there's, there's, there are light rocks and there are dark rocks. And I want to have probably uh, five pictures. So I'm going to have like three dark and two light or three light and two dark or two dark, two light and one medium. Maybe we'll try that. So let me get a dark rock here. I'm going to cut out this picture right here. So I'm going to grab my object selection tool. And, oops. And I've grab this. So this one rock, and I'm going to do uh, Control C or Command C for copy, and Control C or Command V for paste. And I did, I pasted it right there. So I'm going to hit the V key on my keyboard to get my move tool, and then you can see I did actually copy that. There's a little bit of weirdness right there. I can grab my eraser tool and um, get rid of that tail right there. All right, so here is um, one. Oops. 
I need uh, four more. That's, that's like a dark one. And then I need another dark one. Um, let's see. This one, not one that's being cut out by another shape. Uh, it's a little hard to find. Maybe this one right here. It says, I can't find it. Why not? I'm not on the right layer. Duh. All right, click on the right layer. Let's try it again, Dave. You can do it. Boom, there we go. Copy, paste. So there's two, two dark. I'll do a, click on the right layer again, and then we'll do a light one. Copy, paste. Cool, so there's three. Another light one here. Click on the right layer, of course. Uh, here's like a medium, dark and light. Do copy and paste. It's four, and um, here's like another medium. That one looks good. Wrong layer. All right. And then you can see uh, the kind of pictures that we're going to look for for our seamless should have um, something that we can cut out pretty easily. I do get students that like really challenge themselves and they start looking for pictures like um, uh, they're looking for things like uh, autumn leaves or something like a picture like this. Uh, you can certainly do it with that. Uh, it's um, it might be challenging to cut it out. I don't know. The object selection tool is awesome. So maybe in the past it would have been difficult, but I think you can do stuff like this, certainly with some of these pictures. You know, don't choose a picture like this where you have perspective where part of it goes out of focus, or if the picture's vignetted where it has like a little bit of black, uh, a little black gradient around the edges. Those will not work. Those will also create those seam lines. Um, autumn leaves, you could do like candy corn, just like that little moose on Nickelodeon, Nick Jr. Who loves candy corn? I don't know. I remember that song, somebody. Uh, you could do um, uh, m &Ms. You know, this is pretty easy because it's just circles. But a lot of these pictures have vignettes on them, so be careful. But something like this, uh, if it's in focus, I think would work. You could do, uh, you know, a variety of stuff. Uh, like in the example folder, we give you a picture of some flowers. Um, yeah, but you get the idea, right? I think you all have the idea of what I'm doing. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop here, and I'm going to take um, these cutouts, and I'm going to um, put them onto my pattern. There's one. I'm going to put all my cutouts here. Oops. If I can find them, I don't know where they are. There's two. Um, oh, you know what? I can just go like this. Duh. All right. So there are my, um, my five cutouts. I think those are all different. Yeah, they're all different. So this is your, oops, look at this. This is your motif page. This is what it's going to look like. So I'm going to, of course, um, I'm going to save my work as a Photoshop. Uh, let's put it in the right folder. We'll go Photoshop document. Why does it say PDF? Let's say PSD, pattern template. And I'll call this one um, Thursday because this is Thursday class. I'm just, I'm, you don't have to put the day. But I'm doing it because I do this three, four times a week, so so I can find it. So once I have my Photoshop document saved, now I need to make my first PDF. So I'm going to go to File, and we're going to do this four times. We'll go Save As. I'm going to save on my computer, and I'm going to go to my PDF folder. We'll call this one, instead of Pattern Template, here, let's change it to PDF here, Photoshop PDF. I'm going to call this one... Um, Pattern, uh, we'll call it motifs. And we'll call it a Thursday. That's just because Thursday class. All right. So you see how this got checked? Now, every once in a while, Photoshop 
does this for you because they think they're helping you, but this will make your file over 20 megabytes, right? And in the real world, if you if you if a client or a prospective employer asks you to send send them something and you send them something over 20 megabytes, they're not going to look at it. I mean, there, there's a good possibility they won't look at it. They'll just toss it in the garbage, toss your email in the garbage. So you want to make sure you know how to send high quality stuff uh, with a low file size. And this is how we do it. This this preset here, smallest file size, will work. Uh, the default here, smallest file size, not the modified one, but this one will have that unchecked. So, but even if you do, you just have to look at it and make sure this is not checked. Okay. For compression, we want to make sure the image quality is on high, not low, right? Uh, no editing capabilities, and for output, we say no conversion. And I'm going to keep, I'll show this to you every week. I'm going to keep on doing it because it is that important. <clears throat> One thing you definitely need coming out of this class is, is this skill right here. I'm going to save this PDF, All right? It's saved. That My first PDF is done. Now let's work on our first pattern. Let's work on our block pattern, okay? So I'm going to, I don't need my rocks. I don't need my numbers. Um, I don't need half of these motifs. All right. And then uh, this one, this motif title, I can change this to a block. And then let's make our pattern here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle, um, preferably with a color from our color story. Uh, again, if you want to, if you want to kill two birds with one stone, um, you could certainly do that. Let me. Um, do I have a colorful picture? <laughs> I always forget. To, oh, here's the name. So let's say uh, it's primary colors. Let's go back one to the autumn autumn leaves picture. All right. So let's say I have this picture right here. Let's say you were like, I want to create an autumn line with these foliage colors. You're like, that sounds great. So, you know, if you were to put that picture somewhere, and uh, you want to grab your colors from there, you certainly can. Because if you if you were to grab this eyedropper tool right here, and you click down, you can see you can see this is your color picker uh, palette right here. That orange. If I click on this lighter color, it goes lighter. If I go darker, it goes darker. It just reflects whatever color you're clicking on. And so if you have like something like this for your color story, and you're like, you know, I want to use uh, these colors, uh, certainly go for it. So let's say I, I like this kind of orangey yellow here for my background color. So I'm going to go and um, I'm going to make sure my um, my rectangle here is that same color, right? And I just clicked on that little picker with my. Once you uh, double click on this rectangle, vec this little thumbnail right here, not over here, right here. If you click double click right there, you will get your color picker, and then you, you're able to go onto your photograph and choose a color. Uh, I already chose that orange here, so I'm just going to click on that little swatch color changes my background color. So now I'm in line with my project three in case I want to use this project three. You don't have to. You can do all this new if you want the practice. I don't care. Oh my goodness, it's behind my rectangle. So let's move our rectangle. Um, I don't have time to go in here and figure out which layer I need to put it on. So as long as I have my rectangle layer selected, I can go over here to my layer drop down and then go to arrange and I can say send to the back. And now it's all the way at the back, but it's behind my background color. Let's, not all the way in the back. Let's put it right above my background color. And then we can take our three uh, objects. We can move those around. Where are they? Uh, they're right here. I'm going to put my little thing in front of my yeah, it's fine. Where's my strawberry? Of 
Where's the strawberry? There it is. But somehow grouped. Um, all right. So here's my three pictures here. I'm going to put this one on top. All right. So. And uh, this color is, I think, too orangey. Let's let's just pretend like it's a. Oh, now I'm in contrast. All right, but let's just pretend this is one of our colors here. So here's our. I'm gonna arrange these to uh, make my pattern. And this rectangle is too big, so let's shrink this down here. All right. Hold the shift key to get asymmetrical scaling. All right, so there's my background. Now, if I want to make a block pattern, all I got to do is uh, grab my marquee box tool right here, right? And I'm going to go on the inside of my background color. And that is what I want to make a pattern. So I'll just say edit, define pattern, and that's it. And you have to give it a name. We'll call this one uh, Pels One, right? Um, let's uh, now. I have to move all this out of the way, right? So I'm going to move it out of the way. How do we do that? I got to select everything. If I try to move things right now, look what happens. I mean, I could do this. I could move that. But let's put it all together, because these are all separate elements right now. So if I try to resize everything, um, oops, and I don't want to, I want to have a good, accurate picture of the pattern I made. So the problem is my background color is not locked down. So I can always uh, lock it down here, hit the padlock button. Now my background layer is locked down. Now if I grab all these elements right here, you see all my layers are selected. I still have this original selection for my pattern creation, so I want to make that disappear. Control or Command D for deselect. And I have all my stuff that all these layers are selected together. And you can select them just by holding your Control key or Command key down if you want to get all those. But since I have my background layer selected, I could just go to my Move tool and drag it around here. This is a new feature they added. This is great. So now that I have them all selected, all these layers, I could uh, do a Control T or Command T for free transform. We'll move this out of the way right here. There's my motif. And then you want to put like, uh, you know, you want to tell me which motifs you use. Like I used uh, one, comma three, comma five, like that. If you want to tell me, go ahead. We're going to make a big rectangle right here. And we're going to fill it with um, our pattern. So I'm going to go to my fill color, click on the pattern icon here. And um, there's my, my pattern. And I need to see the motifs repeating at least three times horizontally or vertically. So uh, here's my scale slider right here. So if your pattern looks like this, and let's say you're like, you know, on my croaky, I want my pattern to be big. That's fantastic. You can do that for your croquis or your flats. But on the color board where you have the little swatches, I do want you to scale the pattern down. Uh, you will lose like up to 15 points if your patterns are not scaled correctly. So I'm going to just slide this so I can see one, two, three, or one, two, three. See, I, I can see five vertically. Let's see if I'm going to go vertically. All I'd need is like something like this. And uh, if you have your move tool, yeah, there you go, right? And that's my block pattern, right? So if you see my motifs repeating, they're going the same direction on the right and up and down, north and south, east and west. Now I'm going to save uh, save this as a PDF, my block PDF. So here's my Photoshop PDF. It's already there. It says motifs. I'll change that to a block and hit save. 
And my block pattern, oh, your smallest file size. Uncheck this one, good, compression. Image quality is on high, good, output, no conversion. So it remembered my settings from last time, which is great. All right, block. So, okay, so now let's work on um, our half drop. This one's a little bit more complicated. So I imagine you'll be pausing the video a lot. Uh, so this rectangle here, I don't need to have that pattern. You know, I can just, um, oh, wait, here it is. So I, I clicked on the rectangle. Here's my properties over here. It says fill. You know, let's just put uh, a color. I'll try that orange again. And then I need um, new motifs. So we'll do like my butterfly. And we'll do my um, pineapple. And then I, I was supposed to have six pictures. I guess I I didn't. I think I needed seven pictures back in our motifs. I think I missed one. So uh, just remember, um, you should have uh, seven motifs or six motifs cut out. And so seven images total on the page if you're going to include your seamless. All right, layer, we're going to go to uh, arrange, we'll bring to the front. Here's my strawberry. All right, so let's do our half drop. Here's my rectangle, control or command T. Let's um, hold the shift key down so we can get this right. Now, I need to make a pattern that instead of repeating directly to the right and top and bottom, that it goes over and down halfway. So I'm going to grab my marquee box here. We'll drag on the inside of my background color. And um, instead of saying define pattern, I want to copy this. But if I copy it right now, it's only going to copy my rectangle because this is the only layer I have selected. I want the pineapple and the strawberry and the butterfly too. But you can see the pineapple and the, and the butterfly, they're not selected. So I, to make a copy of those, you have to do, instead of just go to copy, you're going to say copy merged right here. Click on that. So it's going to copy everything in this box that you can see. That's copy merged. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to make a new, um, a new file from my clipboard because what I just copied is now in my clipboard, and here are the dimensions right there. I'll hit Create, and I'll hit Paste. And there's my half, half of my half drop, right? So now I, I need to create my, um, my second half over here and drop it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to double the width of my um, canvas size. So we're going to go to Image drop down. We'll go to Canvas Size. And then we're going to change our units to percent because I can't do math. I'm sorry. Here's my percent. I'm going to say the width has to be double. So I'm going to say 200. And I don't want to move the picture over, so I'm just going to click on this arrow and say, push the picture over to the left. Thank you, Adobe. There it is. It doubled my width and pushed my picture to the left. So I'm just going to hit paste again to get my second image here. Grab my move tool. Put this over here. Occasionally, you will see like a little white line in there. If that happens, um, the way to get rid of that is just click on your layer here. Do a Control T. Just pull it out like a hair, it's a tiny hair. Pull it out like that. Hit OK. We've covered that. It's a little bit bigger. Who's going to know? No one's going to know. All right, so we're going to drop this halfway. So instead of cutting and pasting and placing, doing this whole rigmarole, they, we have a tool for this. I'm going to click on the right layer that I have, and I'm going to go to uh, Filter, Other, and Offset right here. And oh my God, it's like gone crazy. So my horizontal, which is left and right, make sure that number is on zero. And then um, if this were on zero, this is what you're all going to be looking at when you do it, because I do it all the time. It gets all messed up. I'm going to take my vertical, this up and down one, and I'm going to just slide it. Instead of doing math and dividing my picture number 50%, I'm just going to eyeball it here to get like this strawberry cut in half-ish. 
something like that. That looks good for half drop. Okay. So this will be my motif that's repeating. So I'm going to select this whole thing. And I'm going to do a copy merged again because I have two different layers. I could, I could actually merge these layers, but if you're in a rush, you can just go copy merged. And now when I go back over here, um, let's see, I don't need, I don't need this. So let's see what those, um, I don't need uh, this anymore. I don't need uh, this one. All right. So since I did the copy merge from this one over here, here, there that is. So this will be my swatch. And you can say, you know, um, yeah. Is that how we did it? I don't know. Let's check. And motifs and the swatch. OK, so that's what we're doing. So here's my swatch. Uh, here are my motifs. You know, we can um, grab these and say, pull T. All right, and then now I need to show my pattern here. So I'm going to grab a rectangle. And then I'm going to, uh, whoops, excuse me. I'm going to fill this with my pattern. Oh, I forgot to make the pattern. All right, so after I did this copy merge, I forgot to make the pattern. Edit, define pattern. We'll call this one uh, Pine Pattern Express. All right. So um, let's go fill this rectangle with our pattern here. Right there. And uh, hit OK. Let me just count. One, I, I don't really have three going horizontally or vertically, so let's edit that pattern. Here's the scale. We'll go like a 70% maybe. One, two, three, one, one, two. I, I have three going horizontally, so I'm good. So here's my half drop. I'm done. Right? So uh, we'll go to um, Save As, File, Save As, Save on my computer. In my PDF folder, great. We'll change this to half drop Photoshop PDF. Right there. All right, we've saved it. Let's see. Smallest file size, uncheck. Make sure this is unchecked. Good. Compression, image quality, high. Output, no conversion. And then we did our half drop. All right. So now let's. Um, Let's uh, put these back. Where's my, OK. All right, so now we're going to do our seamless. And let's look at the rock. So you remember here, when I drew my square, I'm going to show you that old seamless one here. And you can do a pattern overlay if you double over here as well if you just select pattern overlay you can do it this way as well I think this one was my not seamless yeah so you can see those harsh seam lines here because the rocks are cut off at the edges so we want to get rid of these flat edges to get rid of this visual uh, line that's happening in our seam so this is how we do it so I'm going to go over here. I don't need this anymore. Let's close this. I'm closing unnecessary tabs to uh, to um, reduce the load on my computer because 
Photoshop starts to use, your computer will start heating up. So make sure, again, you're not on a comforter or on a pillow or on the carpet, that you have some airflow underneath your laptop so you don't overheat your computer. All right, so here's my rock picture, and you can see the edges are cut. We want to get rid of those edges. So we're going to get rid of the edges by cutting out each of the pictures, which is what I did. I have like these five rocks, a couple dark, some medium, right? I could probably use another dark one if I could find one. Let me see. Maybe that one. Object selection tool. This looks kind of wrong layer. Okay. Maybe this one. He pays with this. All right. So here's my photograph. And let me show you the offset. Filter. Oops, I gotta be on the right layer, of course. Filter, other offset. We'll put both these on zero like we did before. So here's our photograph. Now I'm gonna slide the horizontal a little bit until this line, the seam line, goes down the middle. And then I'm gonna slide this vertical one over until this seam line goes down the middle too, until I have a nice little cross in the beginning, in the middle of my artboard. So now I can see 100% of my little broken seams here that's causing this problem. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rocks here, here's my rock, and I'm gonna cover up these seam lines. But it's important that when we do this, we don't go over the edge because then we just create a new seam line, right? And then don't do this. Don't like line up your rocks along the edge like this because then you create a border, which we're trying to avoid. So we have to, once, once we paste it, again, we're not going over the edge. We need to vary it so that we're not going like up and down. So I'll do I'll do like four per pass. There's one over here. I'll do one like uh, over here, but I'm going to um, flip it around, maybe make it a little bigger. Um, we can make it smaller too. We don't want them lined up too obviously. All right, so there's one rock. Um, let's do another rock. Here's another one. Is that my dark one or is that medium dark? It's a light one, it's a light one. All right, so let's put one over here. And you could overlap them like this if you want. That's not a problem as long as you're not creating a, a seam line. Um, let's put one over here. Try to do no more than four. One, two, three. You see, I'm just going off center. I don't want to line them up too much. Maybe over here. And uh, let's go next rock. We got a light colored one. Boom. Let's paste that over here. Let's. I'll put that over here. to cover those little visible lines. Now I have one little visible seam line right here. I think I've gotten rid of the rest of them. Do I have any more rocks? Oh, I got two more rocks. Look at that. So here I put one rock there. And at this point we can just start, you know, adding rocks. Uh, you can change the order, you know, put them on top if you want. Um, Oh, I got tons of rocks. All right. All right. So 
here's my, I, what I don't want to have is like a bunch of rocks making it look like a cross. So I'm just going to kind of add some more rocks here and there. All right. But I've covered up that seam line. That's the important part. Now I can do a select all. And we'll create just a regular block pattern. We'll go uh, define pattern. We'll call this one uh, seamless rocks. And then when I go over here for my pattern overlay, instead of doing the not seamless, I'll, so watch the seam lines here. When I click on my new pattern, they're gone. I mean, they do kind of line up here, but it's better than what it was, right? Right? This is what it was. Definite, harsh seam lines, and this is the new one. So again, with the scale, sometimes people will hand something in that looks like this. Fantastic. I love that you show me your seam work, but no, I need to have it zoomed out so I can see if there's a visible seam line. So this, this is somewhat acceptable. This is acceptable. If you do it like this, you'll get full, no problem. You get full credit. Oh, I forgot to put my, my stuff over here. Where is it? So let's uh, make this rectangle disappear. And I'm going to go look for my rocks, not those. I think this was one. And then I need to find my my rocks here. There's one, I think these are the rocks. All right. OK, and then this is your seamless. So I will uh, we'll save that as a PDF. Call this one seamless. And we'll make sure smallest file size, uncheck editing capabilities, compression, say image quality on high, output, say no conversion. And that's it. Now we can just make our combo PDF. So I'll go to my Adobe Acrobat DC. And I'll go to my tools page. We'll go to combine files. Let's go to add files. So here I'm, I'm in my PDF. And let's say you have a bunch of stuff. You don't know which one's yours. You can just click on date modified and look for the date. Look for today's date, 1021. If you don't see date modified, you can right click up here and say, you know what? And you can choose which categories you want to have visible. So I want to have date modified visible. I want to have size visible. But anyway, seamless half drop block motifs. I'm holding my control key down to select multiple items at once. Then I can just hit open. And here are my three PDFs. You can click on this little hamburger button right here. It's like three lines. And that will show you your sizes. And I have one, these are all under one megabyte because 1,000 kilobytes is equal to one megabyte. So I have one, two, three, I have about four megabytes. I'm, I'm fine. So wait, four is less than 20, last I checked. So block, half drop, uh, seamless goes in front of, oh, let's put the motifs up front, block, half drop, seamless. That's it, hit combine. And it combines it into my motif page, my block page, my half drop page, seamless page. But it says binder here, so I'm going to save this again. Save it someplace we can find it. I'm going to say, I'm not going to go to the cloud. I'm going to go to my computer. I'm going to choose which folder I want to save it in. Probably my fashion tech folder, probably my PDF folder. We'll call this one um, capital P, capital S for Photoshop. Patterns. Should be enough. Uh, and I'll say Thursday because today. And there it is. And that's your homework. This is due next week. Right now, if you want to use these patterns for your project three, here, let me show you how to do that. All right. 
I'm going to make a new board print. We'll go uh, 11 by 14. I'll go, um, I'm going to go landscape. We'll call this one um, last name uh, project three uh, color board. Color mode is CMYK. 300 DPI. Okay, great. So here's my new mood board. And um, like we saw earlier, your mood board and your color board need to be related. So it has to be cohesive. So I don't want to look, I need to be able to look at one board and then instantly go these two board and look at your color board and go, this obviously is connected to this one. They're cohesive because I can see the same colors. I can see these three skeletons here, these three skeletons. I see this little uh, Baroque-ish uh, minimalist fleur-de-lis symbol uh, is repeated here as the swatch pattern. So obviously, these are created. Again, here is another one that I didn't like. Uh, I have like a background of like flowers with just lazily four or five pictures slapped on here. Um, and then over here, I've got like a tree forest. And this is completely unrelated. These two boards are not related in any way, shape, or form. So um, no, don't do that. And then here's another example of somebody made a mood board, this kind of abstract expressionist style with the splotches. And you can see the splotches were carried over the same color palette to the color board. Here we have another mood board. The student said, I, I don't have confidence in creating a composition. So she used symmetry. Symmetry is a great way to do this. There's symmetry. Here's her color board. I can see the map here is carried over. Need to have at least one visual element carried over from, from front to back. And you can see how usually it's the background that's related. So, and as I was showing my students here, a very easy way to get uh, your background colors at a gradient. But if you want to find a photograph, I was going to uh, unsplash because I tend to find royal a lot of great royalty free pictures. If your trend, let's say, were something like a uh, healing or self re rejuvenation or something, and I want to imagine, so what's the mood I want to evoke for someone who's trying to rejuvenate and meditate and cleanse themselves? You know, water, air, maybe clouds or something. So. This is a, it's hard to get free cloud pictures online. They always take you to uh, wallpaper stuff that costs money. So um, you want to create a picture that's somewhat abstract, that has a nice little background. You know, even if you grab something like this, look at this picture. This is a nice picture. Oh, when you grab a picture, always grab the URL too, this URL, because you need to have that at the end of your um, paper. After your reference page, you'll have URLs for all the pictures that you used uh, for your mood board, for your mood board. So you make sure you, you grab the URL there. And then I'm going to um, grab this picture, copy the image, bring it over to Photoshop. And you'll see, <laughs> that's funny. All right, try it again. Copy. Sometimes you got to wait like a second. Paste. <laughs> all right, I'm just going to save it. Watch this. Uh, we're going to go right click. We'll do it the long way. Save image as, and I'll save it to my um, my board here. And once you have it saved, you can go to Photoshop and we go to File, we go to Open, and uh, there's no way I'm going to find that. Was it week four patterns? See this, even I have trouble with this. Okay, save image as, where'd it go? Where'd I save it? Fall tech, P2 patterns for week eight. Okay. So we'll go to uh, file, open, 15 fall tech, oops. P2 patterns for week eight. There it is, uh, right here. So here's my photo. So I can take this um, and we'll select the whole thing. We'll copy it. We'll go to our color board. We'll hit paste. And you can see this picture is not big enough to color to cover the artboard. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to 
scale the picture up because when you do that you can see it gets it gets pixelated and when we go to print it looks awful you can lose up to five points per picture if it's pixelated so let's not do that i'll show you here's something we can do if we like the picture but it's not fitting you can um just tile it and uh and i have something called snap on so when you have that on it kind of snaps to the edge and snaps together but i want to line these up We'll do a, a transform and we'll do a flip horizontal here. We get a kind of mirrored image. This doubles our real estate right here. You could, if you wanted to put like a focus in the front or if it's too distracting, you can just move it over and do the other end, you know. Um, either way, probably this one. And, um, yeah, oops, not really lined up. Uh, with these two, if you wanted to combine these, merge these layers, you can just hold your control key down or your command key, click on the other layer and right click and say merge. Now it's just one photograph. And once you get pretty close to being the right size, uh, you could kind of try to run through wet paint and maybe, maybe I won't notice, but um, if you're nervous about it, uh, just go ahead and tile it one more time. Um, and then you can flip it. Uh, this time it's going to flip vertically. And, uh, you know, see how that looks. I can take these two layers. I can merge those. I could do a control T and, uh, you know, you can start moving things around. You know, I just took one picture and I just tiled it. You're certainly welcome to do that. You need a title here. Um, spring has spoing. Okay, so um, now if I did drop shadow, you're probably not going to be able to see that here uh, because I have a lot of color on the background. So I'm not going to drop. Let's do some outer glow here at this time. That's a little obnoxious here. So let me see. Um, Maybe just a little bit. Here's the opacity. You can bring the, you can play with the opacity. Play with the spread here. Just so I can see what, what's going on. Um, remember, remember this one. If you wanted to curve it, uh, you certainly could. If you wanted to, and goof around with that. I don't know. Um, we have our. Uh, theme remember it has to be in the future um, I don't want anything this year or spring summer 2022 is still too early um, let's take these two layers and uh, I can link these layers here now they'll, they'll move together all right so you have your title your theme and then you needed some imagery to put on there. And so what I was showing students before was like, um, so I'm looking for more images of healing. You know, what's your idea of healing? Maybe some people's ideas are uh, meditation, you know, like, um, It's going to be hard. So <laughs> here, here's a picture here. So, oh, I got to find the URL, right? I'll go copy. Then I'll grab the picture. Can I grab this picture? Come on. And so here's my picture here. Uh, I want to cut that picture, cut that lotus leaf out. I don't want to see any um, square edges here. So I cut that out, paste that in. And you know, I can see I'm a little disappointed with how small this is, but it's no matter. You can make it bigger. How do we make it bigger without stretching it? You can just start tiling. Um, each one of these, you could like uh, rotate a little bit. Maybe make a flower, flower.
you can get creative. So you can definitely have more than six pictures on your mood board. You have a minimum of six pictures here. So here's my all my flower layers here. And I want to select all these. I can just um, hold my, I can do a shift select, hold the shift key and select the bottom and top layer. Hold the shift key and they'll select everything in between. This will all move together. And I can do a copy and paste and I can um, flip that one, uh, transform, flip horizontal, right? Um, I can grab all of these layers here. Maybe, uh, and, and then uh, I can link them all. Now they'll all move together, and then I can start, you know. You can just get creative with your work, and you can make just a few images go a long way. I think you, you all get the point here. So, um, I can grab all these. Look at that. All right. So, you know, you see what I'm doing? If you have smaller images that you like, don't scale it up. Just get creative with your layout, and you'll be fine. All right. So let's move on to creating our color board. So the easiest thing to do would be, uh, let's, um, I'm going to merge. Should I merge all these? Sure, I'll merge them all. All right, so, hello. I thought I merged them. Didn't I hit merge? All right, so I'm going to, go on and make my color board here. And then what I see a lot of students doing here, <laughs> there's got to be an easier way to do this. All right, you want to make your color board. So here's my background image. Uh, let's say I want to keep that and make my color board. You can always just um, click on the layer and uh, Oops, so I have the layer here. And right here in your layer panel, if you click on it, you have an opacity slider. You could just slide it down and then create your color board if you if you don't want it to compete with your colors. But, but it's not really an issue. It, even if you do have vibrant colors in your background, you can always just add like a layer effect to your color story. So I'm going to lock this background picture down because I don't want it moving around while I am drawing. And you know, if you wanted to just do uh, rectangles, um, that's no problem. So I have the snap on. So once I have a distance between two, if I copy and paste this, it will snap to that same distance. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So we need five colors for our color story. Um, and you can do squares for your color story and for your uh, patterns and um, your three patterns and two fabrics, or it's three fabrics and two patterns. What is it? Let's take a look. Uh, it's lab folder, projects. Project three, color board. Uh, two patterns, three different motifs, two colorways, and three swatches. Two patterns, three swatches. So that could be like, um, just like what we did before. Where you're going to have like, uh, three patterns and two fabric swatches. You could do it this way if you wanted. And if you wanted to change your um, colors, you know, you just grab your eyedropper tool and you go like, you know, I want, I want to have like, a, you know, this blue color, this color here for my rectangle, right? So all you got to do is double click on your rectangle. You go click on this blue right here. And there's your color. And, uh, you know, 
same thing. This rectangle right here, click it with your move tool, double click it. You say, you know, I want this this lighter blue. I should have chosen a picture that had greater variety of color, but uh, you know, that's how you get your color story. Now let's say you didn't want to do rectangles. You wanted to get a little fancier than that. You're like, you know, I want to make sure I get an A in the class. This doesn't mean you're getting an A, but I mean, this certainly helps. So let's say, um, where's my um, my picture? Pink flower. Okay, so let's say you wanted to use this flower um, as your motif or as your shape. You could certainly do that, All right? So here's my thing. I'm going to copy. I'm going to cut this flower out again. Um, paste this flower in. And um, oh, it got bigger somehow. What the what? Okay. <laughs> anyway, so uh, if you wanted to do like your five color story this way, there's no problem. I'll just grab this. We'll copy that. One, two, three, four, five. And you could do this. And again, you see how I don't have any kind of drop shadow to differentiate it. Uh, you certainly could if you wanted to. Well, let's change the color first. So if you wanted to change the color, um, you know, there is something called a color replacement tool. So if I had like a color selected, like let's say this orange here, this down here, and I wanted to change this color, sometimes you can go into your brush tool. There is a color replacement tool. There are plenty of YouTube videos on how to do this. Whether you're going to do saturation hue or or something, ah, here's hue. So I change the hue to get these colors to change. Um, let's try with this this one, this layer, and I want. Let's say I want to have uh, this kind of like light blue, right? So I'll grab my color replacement tool. I'm in that light gray blue here, and you know I'm changing the hue here. What happens if I choose color? Will that work too? Color or hue? Let's try this one. Uh, I need a different color. I need something colorful. I should have. Oh, that is on my board already. Oh, I'm an idiot. All right. Somewhere here where autumn leaves, I've lost it. All right, let's just find it again. No problem, Dave. Come on, you can do it. Copy image. <laughs> you can do this, Dave. You can do it. All right, let's do it the long way. So they've put in all these safety features in here. Not safety, the copyright images here because they do not want us doing this, what I am doing, what I'm showing you. Shame on me. All right, let's go in. Autumn leaves here. Select all, copy. Okay, so here's my, so you have more colors here. And I wanted to choose, uh, you know, like this uh, green color. There's my green color right here. I'll go and I'll choose um, this flower. And then I'll go to color replacement tool. I'm on color. Will it change my color? Oh, look at that. Boom. And if you wanted to do that, uh, you certainly could do that. So let me finish. Um, sort of dark red, which kind of is almost the same color it is right now. A little confusing. All right. And then um, what don't I have? 
bright yellow. Will that work? Move tool, we'll click on this flower here to make sure I'm on the right layer. And I'll grab my color replacement tool and yell. Yeah. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it, if let's say uh, if that isn't working, if you're trying it out, it doesn't work, here's an easy way to do this. I'm going to just click on the, the shape to get the make sure I'm on the right layer. Now I'm going to hit something called uh, human saturation. It's up here under image, adjustment, hue and saturation. The command is control U. It sounds like hue. You get it? Yuck, yuck. OK, or command U. You know, so I'm just going to go click on the right layer. We'll go control or command U. Here's my hue saturation, right? Hit the colorize button right here. Hit the saturate button. And then you can choose really any color you want. And you can pretend like you matched it. I don't care. I'm, I'm not going to get a Pantone color detector up and check to make sure, excuse me, check to make sure you have the exact Pantone color. You can approximate it. Just make sure you hit the colorize button. Make sure you're on the right layer. S crank the saturation up. Choose your color, right? You want to put your, let's put a little bit of uh, drop shadow or layer powder glow on this. Let's see which one looks good. Let's try the drop shadow. Yeah, even a little bit of drop shadow, that works. Um, Hit OK. Then I'll... Once you have it dialed in, you can just click it, and it'll automatically uh, go. It'll just add the drop shadow. Um, if you want to do outer glow, you can do outer glow. Whichever one, you experiment. You'll figure out which one you like. But even with a dark background, it still um, still looks pretty good. All right, so now I need um, my pan. I need my color. So you're gonna call this one like uh, mustard or something. You label your colors. It's way too much. All right. You know, maybe the drop shadow is working. I'm having trouble with the outer glow right now. But even if the dark background it still makes it legible, which is all that we need, right? So I'm going to just copy and paste this, um, like a template here. Pay attention to these little magenta lines. They'll always help you. Okay. Uh, call this one. Um, <laughs> what 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 is this color? Look like to anybody? Kale. Okay. Uh, the, the color names should all relate to your theme, of course. I'm not doing a, a good job of that because you know, when you try to rush creativity, it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> right. Bonus points. Anyone can tell me what that means. All right. Um, it's gross. Don't look it up. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Oh, we need our, our Pantone codes here. So what's the Pantone code for this color? P what? How do we find out? So you go to your color story. So you have your color story somewhere. If, if this is your color story, then uh, let's take a look. You find a color that matches. Double click on your, on your color picker. You go to your color library. You choose your color book. Uh, coded is like shiny, uncoded is matte, so you choose the one you want. It'll highlight the closest color to what you have. 32-2-U. Okay. 
32-u-32-2-u. Uh, All right, so there's my phantom code. And so it'll look something like that when you're done. If you want to get things lined up, you just drag a guide in here. You know, the guide uh, controller or command R to get your guide, and you can just uh, line things up like that. You'll change the Pantone codes to match your color, of course. Um, and how we do that is uh, eyedropper tool, grab the color here, double click here in your picker, go to color library, choose your Pantone CMYK uncoded is what I have. 174.4-U, so we'll go and, whoops, we'll click right here. 174-4-U, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so on, I'll assume you do that. Now, if you want to do the same shape for, um, you want to do the same shape, for your uh, patterns and your fabrics. Let me show you how to do that. So once again, here's my flower here, and I'm gonna cut out this flower. And um, so let's say I have, I wanna have, what was it, two? Two patterns, three fabrics. Okay. Two patterns, three fabrics. Come on. So if I want to put a pattern on here, all I have to do is uh, go to my FX panel, do pattern overlay, or I can just double click here to the right of my text, and uh, eventually it'll pop up. Pattern overlay. And there's my seamless rock pattern. You know, Let's try my uh, half drop. Now I need to see the motifs repeating three times, so I have to scale this quite a bit to see at least three, one, two, three, and we're good. If I want to add some drop shadow to that, I could as well. That's my drop shadow. All right, and then uh, if I want to do a colorway, you know, you're supposed to, while you're doing your pattern, create two patterns, one with different colors, but you know, you can cheat this, or I'll show you how to do it. Control or Command U. Remember that hue saturation? We hit the colorize button, hit the saturate, and then we can, um, and nothing happens. Why is nothing happening? I'll show you why. Because we need to rasterize. This, this layer is not yet a rasterized layer. Remember Photoshop rasterization? So once we have our pattern in, we're going to right click on the layer and say rasterize layer style. Once it is rasterized, now if I do a Control U, hit the colorize button, saturated, of course, we can, you know, change the color to uh, anything. Of course, it changes everything. So if you don't like that, you can just go back and back to your pattern creation and uh, change your background color if you want. But, you know, you don't have to. This is the easiest way to do this. Um, so then I'll, we have, we have to have two patterns, right? So there's one pattern. And we'll call that one, um, I think, what was that, Pineapple Express? Okay, and then uh, let's change this uh, pattern here. This pattern overlay we'll do, uh, you know, we could do our seamless rock one if we wanted. At least three motifs here, this should be good. And then we'll call this one the, here, this next layer, I'm going to rasterize it, right click, say rasterize. Then I'm going to um, do a control or command U, hit the colorize button, slide my saturation over, and uh, you know, choose a color, right? We'll call this one um, Rocky uh, Road. I'm getting hungry. All right. Now, 
then we need uh, our our swatches, right? Three fabric swatches. So, um, whoops. So let's say we have to have three fabric swatches and their colorways. So we're going to find like a uh, just go to Google and just type in some fabric that you want to uh, use. And you don't, I don't need the um, URL for fabric. Again, I don't need the URL for fabric, but let's go ahead and paste this. So I'm going to make sure my fabric covers my, and I'm going to cheat this here a little bit. That's fine. Is, uh, it's just a fabric. All right, so put my fabric there. Let's put this above my fabric. All right, so we'll have our shape here above the fabric, and you can do any shape you want. It doesn't look like a flower anymore, but that's fine. So I'm going to cut this out onto my fabric. So here's how you do it, right? Uh, <laughs> here's how you do it. I'm going to grab my object selection tool. Will this work? Yeah. So I made sure I was on my flower layer when I did that. And I did my object selection tool, and I got my outline here. Now if I make that layer disappear, I'm left with my cutout. So to cut this out, all I got to do is select my fabric layer, and then I can um, move this around here. Select my fabric layer, and now I'm going to go cut. We'll make that layer disappear. We'll paste it in B for selection. Here's my fabric layer. So here's one and here's two. And you want to change the colors of your fabrics. We can, you can do the color replacement tool or we could just go to uh, hue command control U. Just cheat this. So the first one is kind of a yellowish color. And then, you know, uh, what was it? Two fabrics, three, I think it was three fabrics. Three, three fabrics, okay. So I need, I need the groups of three of these. So we'll call this one like, um, Hemp, and of course, this is a uh, velveteen hemp, it's not velvet for any of you in fabrics class. Sawyer, I'm talking to you. All right, here we go. So let's see, put this here. So there's one grouping. Let's do two and three. And, you know, we'll call this one uh, velvet. Call this one uh, satin. I mean, you got, of course, you're going to get the right color, the right swatches here. Control U, colorize. It's already rasterized, so I don't need to worry about it for, in this case. Um, control U, colorize button, crank the saturation over. Control or Command U, colorize, crank the saturation over. This is fine. All right, and then there's your color board. That's it. It took me, what, I don't know, 30 minutes to make that. So your color story, and then you can do the rectangles. You're done even faster. So if you do the rectangles right, just make sure you put a layer effect behind it, outer glow or drop shadow on the text as well to make it a little bit more visible. Uh, you need two different colors for each pattern, two different colors for each of your fabric colorways. Now, I did all velvet here, but of course, you're going to go through and find your own correct 
fabrics. Once that is done, we're going to go save as, uh, save my computer. We could do, uh, yeah, PDF color board. Uh, where is that? We'll go uncheck preserve editing capabilities. See, it, uh, it, it, if you're not paying attention, you're going to get nailed by that. Compression, say image quality high, output no conversion. And then there's my PDF. And so I just need to create my mood board combo. So I'll go back over to Adobe Acrobat DC, go to Combine Files, Add Files here. And uh, we'll go, where's my date modified? Let's go right click and say date modified. Here's my pattern board. I just made this. No, no, those are my patterns. Um, add files. Of course, I don't know where I saved it. You see? <laughs> save as, where did I save it? I saved it. I put it into my week eight patterns. Okay, this is really, and this happens. It happens when you rush. This is why we don't rush, folks. So I'm gonna go over here. We'll go to uh, add files. And uh, I had it in 15 follow tag PS2 patterns for week eight. Date modify, there it is, color board. All right, so where's my mood board? I have no idea. Let's go try to find it. <laughs> Somewhere, did I not? Okay, I know I have one. All right, so I think I made this uh, in a previous uh, your mood board, okay. So um, I want to put my mood board first. So mood board, uh, color board. Now you want to make sure it's under 20 megabytes, so I'm going to click on this hamburger button right here because, you know, meat, bun, meat. It could be a veggie burger, I guess, beyond meat, whatever. Here we go. Mood board, color board, here's my size. I have one megabyte for my color board half of a megabyte for my mood board. If you're seeing 50 megabytes or 100 megabytes, you didn't uncheck preserve editing capabilities. You're gonna to have to resave it. Go to your master file and resave it because we need it under 20 megs. So right now I'm at one and a half megs for these two. I'm doing great. So I'm gonna combine these two and we'll call this, it says binder three. I gotta save it one more time. Where I can find it, come on Dave, pay attention. Where is it? Uh, fashion tech folder. PDF folder. It's not binder three. This is uh, my last name. And then uh, project three. Call it combo. Call this one Thursday. Uh, There's my combo. All right. So what we're going to do after that is uh, over here. So you go to your course content. You go to your lab folder. Go to your project. This is going to be due before we meet next week. Go to your project folder. And then right here, project three, mood board, color board. Submit one PDF, two artboards, one Word document. Do not go over 20 megs. Do not put your, re do not put your research paper in your PDF. Submit as Word doc. So here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to click here. And here it is all over again. And then I'm going to go browse my computer. And I'm going to go look into my um, my folder here. And there's my combo. So upload that. 
So there's the first one, my last name, Han, Project 3 Combo. Now I need to put the paper. So I have to browse my computer for where is my paper? Where's my paper? I don't know. Let me see. Um, it's probably over here under examples. Um, Oh, it's not there. It's probably over here. It's not over here. <laughs> it's probably... All right, here it is. So, Project 3 paper. So this was done by a student. Her last name was Vo, so her so Vo here. So this is what it's going to look like. Combo. PDF and your document, and that's it. Then you hit submit. You can hear, put, tell me a joke, put me in a good mood, give me the address of a pizza place close to your hometown. I don't know, whatever. Anything right here. Tell me a story. My roommate came in last night, shaved my head. All right, I don't know. And then you hit submit right there, right? Two files. And then for your homework. So let's say you accidentally submitted your paper today into Project 3. So next week when you go do your combo PDF and your paper, you're going to resubmit both files so that they look, so it looks like, like what I just showed you, <laughs> okay? With your paper as a combo. And I keep saying this over and over again because some of you aren't going to do it. Why? All right, so for your homework, you're going to go to your lab here. We'll go to um, the patterns. Print repeats in Photoshop. We'll click right there. Ten points. Browse my computer, and then we'll go to um, my fashion tech folder, and we'll go to uh, PDFs, and we'll go patterns. Right there. More opportunity for more comments, and then submit, and then that's it. And then next week. Uh, be prepared for critiques. I think we're doing critiques next week for Project 3. So we will, once again, after you do all your Blackboard stuff first, of course, we'll go to Slack, and you'll put your Project 3 in your correct uh, area, and then we'll do our critiques. And I think that's it. Let me see. Am I missing something? Uh, no. I think I did everything. Project three, I did the color board. I did the mood board. Let me just do the summary here. If you need me to demonstrate anything for you again, I will right now. I'd like you to take this opportunity to um, practice or get to work. And I'll stay here for another, like, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. Uh, did I go over everything? I think I did. Anybody have any questions? All right, get to work. I'm going to turn the recording off. Unless someone has a question, they want to have it recorded. Uh, should we be doing this, or is he just showing us? This isn't the classwork, right? It is the classwork. All right. Uh, how are we supposed to do the classwork? But we have to use our own images. It's how we're supposed to, yeah. Thank you, Tamia. It's how we're supposed to do our classwork, but we use our own images and motifs. That's right. So now that you've watched it, go ahead and try it. If you need me to do another demo, if you want, to, if you want me to do it step by step and you follow along with me somehow virtually, we can try that. Um, is anybody here? myself. Maybe I am. You never know. I think it's a rainy day. Where'd you all go? All right. So anyone who skips to the last part of the video, it's going to be me crying. <laughs> crying, crying. And then I'll shut the recording off.